Welcome to another iTrack webinar. My name is Tom and I'll be covering the document library creation and how to upload documents into iTrack. So the session is being recorded and we'll be sharing that after the demo. As well, if you have any questions, feel free to type it into the Q&A panel and otherwise we'll uh, leave it open at the end of the session for any kind of questions. I think this will take about 20 minutes. Uh, we're leaving enough time that at the end if people want to see anything again. So right now I'm just going to share my screen. All right. So for people that are used to seeing the system through iTrack, this is will be the folders uh, that we're talking about. So when you log in through portal or through mobile on the left hand side here, people see their forms or their procedures and competencies. There's also an option for documents and within those documents you can have subfolders and within those subfolders you can have the actual documents so we'll walk through the process of creating this um, they have to follow a certain number of steps you have to create the types first then you have to create uh, the document folder structure any subfolders then you have to load the document into dynamics and then you have to associate that document to um, the actual folder location so we'll go through all those steps and I'm going to cover both what it looks like in the classic interface as well as the new Microsoft UCI interface that's going to uh, take effect after October. So for customers that are used to the classic interface, when you're in Dynamics, you'll see a menu for iTrack and under iTrack, you'll see this option for operation settings. That will be where most of the items that we'll be covering today are. And there's one other uh, menu that's out here all by itself called document items. So. I'll kind of uh, swap between the new UCI and the old UCI as well. And for the newer look, uh, it would be like this. So you would log in instead of the menu selections being on top, you'd see them on the left hand side. And depending what you have permission wise, you'll have different areas, but you'll want to select the one that says operations and then scroll down and there'll be a document section here that has items, library, storage and types. So that's what we're going to start with. We're going to start with types. You need to have at least one document type in this in the system. You don't need a different document type uh, for um, for the common use in iTrack. This is just there to help you categorize your documents. So you can have them by procedure, by location, by the document type. So whether it's an image or a map or a form, um, it doesn't really matter. However, you want to uh, categorize them. So what we'll do as we'll create a new one on the fly and I'll show you the minimal amount of entries that you have to make. So uh, we'll call this one corporate. And we're going to leave acknowledgement required as no. Uh, the reason being is that you can turn this on, but then this will create a, a whole bunch of other procedural stuff that would probably be better off handled as its own webinar. So I'll do a save and close and I'll create another one. Just to show you the simplicity of it. I'll say you can call this image. So that's all that it takes to go through step one. Just create one document type and you're off to the races. Next, you're going to create the uh, document libraries. So this is the look that you want to achieve uh, in iTrack. So this is the top level folders if that's how you want to think about them. So here I've created uh, examples where it's corporate safety, operations, environment, anything along those lines. And you can create additional uh, document libraries, any top levels that you want. So well, maybe we'll do it by location. Okay. And here, if you want it visible to everybody um, that has access to within iTrack, uh, then you can just leave this blank. If you want to assign it to a particular team, you can then search for that team. That obviously has to be created in Dynamics and uh, assign it to them only. If you want this to be only visible through the portal, so through the, the web interface, then you can leave the mobile no. But if you want people to see this on mobile, um, then uh, you can select yes. Now that's all that's required. That's the bare minimal, but we'll come back to this um, one more time. So I just went back to the top level. And there it is, there's the order of my document libraries and this achieves step number two. Okay, so if you're in the uh, UCI interface, it's this about the same as the other one, but I'll just pop over real quickly to the 
one other one just to show people that's the same. So if I go to uh, document libraries and click on them, again, the look and feel is more or less the same. Slight variations to create new, you just click new and then everything else is the same. Okay. All right, so the next step is to create subfolders. So in some cases, people want to see uh, folders underneath the top folder. So that this is what we can create. And this part's probably the only tricky part at the moment, just because the UI is a little strange. So I've just chosen corporate as the top level, and I'm going to hit the three ellipses here in the upper right hand corner. And I'm going to select library control. It's going to pop out another window, and it will show me all the different levels. So wherever I want to create a subfolder, I'm going to have to select that level first before I click the button to say add folder. So if I want to add it uh, to a level that already exists, so I select that level. But if it's a level that doesn't exist, I create the top and say add folder. And this is the weird part is that if you have this pop up window uh, fully expanded like this, you wouldn't be able to see the menu that it opened up behind. But that's what it did. It opened up the menu behind and you know uh, because it says new document folder. It tells you what the parent library level is, and if you made a mistake, you can close this window and try again, or you can search for the proper level. And I'll just call this new level. And then I can uh, save it. And then either um, if you close this window or go back to the, the pop up, You'll see that under corporate, I have created new level, so it's right there. If you want to remove the folder because you put it in the wrong location, you can say delete folder. It's going to ask for confirmation. You can say OK. All right, there you go. So I'm just going to create another one at a different level just to show people what that looks like. So now I'm picking a, a subfolder and I'm going to add a sub subfolder. That's interesting. Didn't like something about that. Let me try that one more time. Try a different one. Let's try it under forms. There we go. Let's go back to my pop up. And there it is, new level two. So at this point, you should be able to create steps one through three. So that means you've created the document type, which you'll see in a minute why that is handy. You've created the top level and you've created any sub levels that you need. So at this point, I can uh, close this window, but we'll come back to this one more time. Hopefully everybody's following along. Okay, so the next step is to actually upload the document into the system. So what I'll do is I will go to document items. So that's what it is on the new UCI. And then if I go to the old, it's right here under iTrack and then document items. OK. So to add a new file, you click new. You give the name uh, of the file uh, sample. And you can add keywords to help you search for this document within the system. Um, you can also give it a longer description if you like, but for the most part, all you're looking for is uh, some of this following information that I'm going to cover. So there's the document type. So that's the reason that you need to have at least one document type in the system. So let's pretend this is a safety document. And then content type, uh, we need to talk about these three options here. So the most common is embedded, and that's what I'll end up choosing. Uh, physical location, um, that is a way of classifying documents that reside on site. So for example, if you've got a, a storage area, you can say row one, shelf B, uh, binder X. So you would have to predefine those first, 
and then once they're predefined, you can associate this item with a physical location. So I'm not going to cover that in this uh, webinar, but that option is available. And a hyperlink would obviously be if you wanted to attach a video. Um, so if you have a video on your intranet or it's out on the web for safety training or something like that, you would uh, you select hyperlink and then assign the URL there. So I'm going to choose embedded. That means we're loading up the physical document uh, into Dynamics and then associating it with iTrack. So I'm going to hit save. So it's hitting save is going to open up a couple of sections. I'm not going to cover them in this webinar because it's a little bit more complicated regarding the setup, but there's an option to have uh, document review intervals. So if those documents are only valid for the next year, you can create a system where you, uh, somebody has to review those and you add reviewers. Uh, it's a little bit more involved. If people are interested, we do have documentation regarding for that, but it's not uh, part of the scope for this demo. So what section we do want here is this document version that opens up after you save it. Now, every document that I create is going to start with version zero and you can add additional versions into the system and whatever the newest version will be the, uh, the one that's um, official. And there's a couple extra steps that you have to take in this uh, process in order to make this document visible. So once this appears, you have to double click on the white space. So don't click on any of the blue parts and uh, that will open up another menu. And here there's a few other bits and pieces you don't uh, really need to know about. There's acknowledgements and a few other things, but what you want to do is actually attach the physical document itself and you want to publish it. So in order to attach the document, you have to go to the section here which says enter a note and uh, you can say something like document or you can give it a name or you can explain what this document is, but ultimately you want to get to the uh, paperclip icon so you can select the document and physically attach it. So at this point, I've chosen my document. I hit add note. It's going to go and it's going to attach the file. You'll see that it's there. And then there's only one more step left to do. And you can find this. Sometimes you'll see it as a button, but even if you don't, you can go uh, click on the ellipses and click publish. And once it's published, the status should change. It should publish there. There it is. It just took a little while. So it went from draft to published, and that's what you want to see. So now the document is official. Okay. So if I could just go back. Just go back this way. So there's the document that I created. If I click on it, uh, scroll down here, you'll see that this has been published. They'll say the date that it's published, published, so you're all good. So as long as it's not in draft, um, you should be able to see it. So there's only one other step left. So right now what we've done is we've added the document to the system, but we haven't said which subfolder it belongs in. So that is the last step. So again, it's about the same between the two different uh, types of uh, interface that whether you're in the classic or in the uh, new. So I'll just go pop back over and go to documentation libraries again. And let's say I want to put it into a safety folder. So just as we did in the step that we used to create the subfolders, so I'm going to hit the ellipse and then I'm going to select library control. It's going to open up the pop up window again with um, all my different folders and locations. I'll select where I want this document to go. So in this case, let's say it's under safety policies. I say add document item. And then anything that's in the system will show up. And then once you've selected it, you just said add. It's going to take a second to think about it and then there will be. So it's as simple as that. If you want to uh, move it, you can. If you want to delete it, you can as well. So if I accidentally put this in the wrong place, I can highlight it and then say remove doc item. It's going to ask me for a confirmation and it's going to drop you that association. So it's not deleting the document out of the system. It's just deleting uh, where it's uh, located. So if that wasn't the right subfolder, 
I can try that again, select a different folder, select add doc item, search for it again, hit add, and now it's going to be in the space that I want. So that's it. That completes the most basic steps required in creating the document library and uploading documents to it. There's a bit of a other uh, additional functionality uh, such as document review, acknowledgments, and things of that nature, but that's not part of the scope of the presentation. So hopefully this covers the basics need for people to have. And as I mentioned at the beginning, that is essentially what you're trying to build. Create your structure, create your subfolders, upload all your documents, link them to where they need to be. And after that, it's all about review, um, publishing the draft versions, updating them when you need to. That just becomes a document management exercise. So I've covered most of the what I needed. So I'm going to leave the uh, session open for a little bit. If people have questions, they can ask it or they can type it into the, the Q&A panel. And hopefully that uh, covers what everybody needed. If you have additional questions, uh, we'll be able to answer those if you send it to support at neosystems.com and watch for this video to be uploaded on our webinars page. Thank you for watching.